Hi guys, I'm back and we're gonna continue with our rigorous approach or our, our mathematical rigorous approach to solving or to finding Bernoulli's equation. Now here at, at the videos at the YouTube channel, I really wanna pursue all this physics concept, this math concept with mathematical rigor. So where we left off is this equation over here. We have done it by resolving forces F equals to MA along the streamline. So if you want a lesson on resolving forces, you go, can go check out that video. Now if you want a lesson on integration, you can stick on this video because what we're going to do is now we're going to handle integrating this function right here. Before we do so, let's talk about some physical or some interpretations of it because I think it's very good that we get a feel of all these physics equations. Now, I guess the difference between maths and physics is that maths, where we tend to stick on something theoretical like set theory, we, yes, sometimes the visualization is important, but I believe the visualization of the concept is more important than physics, which is what I'm going to do right now. Going back to not too so long time ago when we talked about hydrostatic pressure. Remember, hydrostatic pressure is fluids that are at rest. So, if, we, if the fluids are at rest, we can substitute the velocity equals to zero at this part of the equation, correct? This equation basically is relating the velocity with the pressure gradient and a change in the, uh, and the specific weight of the liquid and possibly a change in the height as, as suggested by the sine theta. So, th that means it's kind of telling us that for a hydrostatic distribution where velocity equals to zero, somehow the change in the pressure gradient must balance out with the specific weight and the height of the liquid. I mean, that, that all makes sense because in our previous video, when we didn't even discuss Bernoulli's equation, that is what we found out. As we move deeper down the liquid, the pressure here, P, is given by specific weight multiplied by the height, assuming P0 is equal to zero. Well, basically, that is what it's telling us because this equation is telling us because if the liquid is stationary, V velocity equals to zero, a change in the gradient must be balanced out by the specific weight and the height, or at least they are somewhat related, which actually they are. Now, I understand it's a bit difficult to see this equation from this equation over here because this is the differential form. And on top of that, we, are, we derived this using f equals to ma. We did not use f equals to ma. Well, actually we did, but we used a, a separate approach when we found out the, the pressure distribution for hydrostatic liquids. But it's all consistent. That is what is quite interesting. The second implementation is that if we can see, and this is really quite interesting, and, and I would like to talk about it, Notice that Bernoulli's equation d does not really take into account volume or mass per se, right? Now, even though the, the liquid has a mass, it has a volume, notice that from our equation, we have eliminated the volume equation. V is velocity, I stress that again. So the V dash equation, the V dash quantity is gone. And likewise, the mass quantity is also gone because um, we time the volume tends to density, we get a mass. Well, no volume, there's no mass. Instead, but Bernoulli's equation is really an analyze, uh, analysis on the parameter of the density given over here, rho. So that is something interesting, that Bernoulli's equation really, we are taking into account the density. Without further ado, let's go on to the integration. Now sine theta, I will transpose this triangle over here, and this will give me something like this, if I draw it bigger, sine theta is over here. I will define another quantity which is called the change in z. If the z-axis is going up, there will be a small change in z of the water particle. I hope you can see that. How that change in z is related is that the change in z is over here, a small change in z is over there, and a small change in s is still over here, such as it's on the slant height of the water particle, like so. So if we were to notice, sine theta can be equal to change in z divided by a change in s. Well, that is quite good. So specific weight multiplied by a change in z. Or right now, why not we just use the differential form? Because um, there's, no, there's no really any difference as we are still dealing with quantities. Okay, that's the first one. Now the second one, the change of pressure with a change in the slant, in the slant distance. How are we gonna tackle that one? The, it's the differential form of a small change in pressure, which I think I've written before. A small change in the pressure P is, uh, pressure P is partial P, partial N, times a small change in N, add up with partial P, partial S, a small change in S. What we're basically doing is that we know that pressure P varies in two directions. If I were to draw in a diagrammatic form, implementing the axis that we have defined previously, S is in this direction, N is in this direction. For the sake of argument, let's write N, uh, S cap, N cap, which is defined by vectors. So if we start with this point as pressure P, and we want to look at a change in pressure at another point over here, what we can do is that we calculate how pressure P varies in both directions, and multiply them by the respective distances that have varied in that direction. Well, well basically it makes sense because 
to get from here to here, P1 to P2, we must move in a certain direction along S and then a direction along N, right? The along the streamline and up the normal. So what we're going to do is that we're just calculating the differences in pressure along both directions, multiplying that by the change, as easy as that. However, what do we know about M equals to MA along the streamline? M equals to MA along the streamline, a change in N is equal to zero. We have not gone along the normal direction, which we have not. So this will immediately imply change in P is partial P, partial S, DS. Sorry, uh, yeah, uh, my mistake, my mistake. Okay, yeah, oh, okay, doesn't matter. This will be a change in S, and what we can do is that we can bring over the other side and write uh, dp, sorry, dp, small change in P, small change in S is equal to partial P, partial S. Eliminating this quantity using calculus of variations, which is what we have. So, now this is going to be equal to this one over here, so it's quite neat. The main line of argument is that we are resolving along the streamline, which is what we are doing. Now, lastly, last quantity over there, like so. The velocity times by partial v partial s. Now, what I anticipate is that I can differentiate the velocity with respect to s. More specifically, more specifically, differentiating v squared with respect to s. Why do I want to do that? Well, what I want to try to do is I want to eliminate the, the v, right? So that I would have a certain, I would have just had the dv on one side. So later when I integrate, I can just simply um, put in that quantity. Well, that is what the line of argument goes. Now, using chain rule, this one will give me 2v. Differentiate this with respect to itself, which is 2v. Then I need to differentiate it with respect to s, which would simply give me this thing over here. Now, I can re-express this as rho multiplied divided by 2, 2v two partial v partial s, correct? I can re-express this as this one over here, where the two cancel out each other. And notice that this one is going to be equal to this one over here. I can now write this is equals to half rho d v squared ds. There we go. Some algebra manipulation to get this form over here. Now, why do I want that form over there? Well, I want that form over there is because now I can eliminate the ds, making the integration uh, much easier. I can eliminate the ds because all is divided by that common quantity. And then when I eliminate the ds and rewriting it, what I get is, I will shift everything on one side and put it zero on, on the other side. What I get is dp plus half rho dv squared plus v d, sorry, specifically dz is equals to zero. Now, that is quite good because now what I can do is that I'm gonna divide everything by the density. Now remember, what is our assumption? Density is not constant. The liquid still can still be compressible. So, dp divided by density plus half dv squared. Now plus, what is specific weight? Specific weight is equal to density multiplied by gravity. If I'm not, not, if I'm not wrong, yes it is. So I will divide that by density, I will get g dz equals to zero. And now comes the integration but, like I said again, I would keep the density function inside the integral sign. Better be careful on that. And then this one would give us half v squared plus gz equals to a constant c. Let me just have a quick check. Yes, that is it. Now, I stress time and time again, I have left the density sign inside the integral because the density, if you know the, the law of perfect gas, Okay, this is, sorry, there's another way to express it, which is density RT. Now, you see, a change in the pressure, or at least we, this kind of suggests to us that the density is written in terms of the pressure. However, to know how these two varies, we need to know the variation of time. So density is still quite mysterious at, at, at now, at the, at the point of time right now. So that's why I have to keep it inside the integral sign. And basically, this is the equation I have, Bernoulli's equation. However, most students or most analysis, what we normally do is that we just simply let density uh, equals to a constant. It's a bit funny, really, because when students see such a difficult equation, they just simply let density equals to a constant so we can eliminate that out of the integral sign. But nonetheless, it's a fair assumption. I must say, because liquid, the density doesn't vary that much, and for gases at low volumes.
So gases at low volumes, uh, density equals constant is a fair assumption. Though I must say that I would really like to keep it inside there. Proceed on with the analysis of the perfect law, relating density pressure and time. And then after that, we can do some proper integration, which maybe the techniques that I have right now, or maybe you have right now, is not too, is not available to handle that. But nonetheless, if density equals to a constant, what we can do is that now we can rewrite this as pressure plus half V squared and plus pre, uh, no, no, sorry, pre, density plus density multiplied by gravity multiplied by the Z and is equals to a constant, uh, C1, for the sake of precise labeling. Or basically, let's just put a C, we raise this equation away. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is our Bernoulli's equation founded by Daniel Bernoulli in 1738, published in his paper called Hydrostatics. A very celebrated equation and used a lot in fluid mechanics.